We managed to make our package manager as fast as bun on the clean install. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the code for the new caching system, so that cached packages would instantly load into the node modules folder, and we'll later see if we can make this faster than bun. First, I implemented a mechanism that would check if a package was already in the cache. Before doing this, we need a hash map to check what versions are cached. I created a lazy static variable, storing a hash map of cached versions. Lazy static allows us to call the get cache versions function only on the first time the variable is used. This data can be reused throughout the lifetime of the program. First, it's important to note that we must keep track of whether or not each version is the latest version. Because say we do install my package, this is by default asking for the latest version, but we have no way of knowing what version in the cache is the latest. As a solution, we keep track of this by writing a boolean inside a lock file, and I'll explain lock files in a bit. So when fetching the cache packages, we read each entry inside the node cache folder and open its respective lock file. Now, if we were to read the whole of each and every lock file in the cache, that would be inefficient as these files can be quite large and passing every single package lock would be a waste. Instead, I did something a little bit cheeky. As a solution, I only read between the 12th and 15th byte on each lock file, as the latest boolean will always be in the same place. I then check if this string is equal to the value true, and if so, we know the package is the latest version. Finally, we pass the package name and add it to the hash map. Now, I'm aware that if someone were to prosify this file or modify it, the program would end up re-downloading packages unnecessarily. But I'm a businessman. More Stack Overflow posts means more marketing for my package manager. Finally, we can check if the item is already in the cache. If the user requested the latest version, we can get the latest version from the hash map, if it exists in the hash map. Otherwise, we find if a specific version exists in the hash map. If the version was not fully resolvable, we then use the semver crate to check if a compatible version exists in the cache, with the matches function. We then call this function for each dependency, and load the cache version if it is already in the cache, and I'll explain loading the cache later. As you can see, the install function is already looking pretty messy. To fix this, I split the installer into smaller segments. The install command handler would be responsible for getting the necessary data needed to install a package. The actual installer would be responsible for recursively reading dependencies and installing them. I also set the installer to take in install context and package info structs, as this is cleaner than passing in seven arguments. The issue with putting the install context in a struct like this is that I need to be able to pass it across multiple threads in a recursive loop, meaning that Rust would freak out with the amount of data moves being made. Fortunately, I was able to implement the clone trait for the struct. Now you're probably thinking, um, actually, that's very inefficient. However, by pure chance, all three of these fields use an arc mutex under the hood, meaning that cloning them does not actually clone the data, but instead creates a tracked reference to it. As mentioned in the previous video, I'm using an atomic user to wait for when the threads are finished running, but this is looking a little messy. Let's instead put this functionality inside a struct called task allocator. Originally, I made the active tasks a property of the struct. However, I later realized that each instance would not be transferable across threads recursively. Instead, I settled on creating a static struct, which would wrap on top of Tokyo spawn functions, referencing a static atomic use size. This worked a treat, and after some more small cleanups, the code is already looking a lot better. Let's now explain lock files. At the moment, the package manager recursively calls the npm API to figure out all the dependencies the package relies on, so we know all the packages to put inside the node modules folder, which of course is very inefficient. Think of lock files as a sort of cache that is created after the first install of a package. Their responsibility is to store the exact versions a package relies on, so we only have to pass a single JSON file, instead of making a bunch of HTTP requests. There are also other benefits of lock files, but I won't get into them. To implement this, we need to keep track of all the packages and their dependencies, which is a little bit of a brain fuck, and not the good kind. I don't entirely know how this works, uh, but it sounded right in my head, and to my surprise it actually worked. The solution is to create a vector of strings for each package that's installed, and then for each dependency, append it to that array. When the dependency is fully resolved, we add that array to the dependency version in a hash map. Once all the dependencies are added to the cache folder, we then loop through each dependency in the hash map, and generate a log file that contains an array of all dependencies that package relies on. Okay, I hope that made sense, because it hardly made sense to me. Now we have the cache working, I'll show you how we loaded this into the node modules folder. Copying files directly from the cache into the node modules folder is very inefficient, especially if multiple projects rely on the same package. The better approach is to use symlinks, which are essentially pointers to a file location. The great thing about these is that the operating system treats them as actual files, instead of pointers. My idea was to take advantage of this 
by creating a sim link for each package inside the node modules folder. Once the packages were cached, I read the log file and created a sim link to each dependency, so it would point to its cached directory. I installed the JSON web token package to see if it actually worked, but I ran into a strange issue where Node wasn't resolving the sim links properly. However, Coventus saved the day by finding the preserve sim links option, which finally got this working. His GitHub will be linked in the description. Now, let's finally see if this is faster than Bun. I benchmarked it, and we're three times slower. So, to conclude, I have no fucking clue how Bun pulls this off. There are probably a few reasons why mine is slower though. Even with this failure, we're still pretty fast, like it's still 20 milliseconds. I've still strengthened my rust muscles and I've had fun doing so. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.